If you like our video, click the button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides, visit us at www.teachucomp.com. Before you can issue a paycheck to an employee, you must have the employee entered into Sage 50. You looked at the process of setting up payroll and entering the employee defaults back in Chapter 2. Now you will learn how to create the individual employee records. To add an employee in Sage 50 Accounting, select Maintain, Employees, Sales Reps from the menu bar to open the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window. You use this window to add new employees and edit employee information. If needed, to add a new employee, click the New button in the Windows toolbar. At the top of the window, enter the ID to assign to the employee into the Employee ID field. Then type the first name, middle initial, last name, suffix, and nickname of the employee into the five corresponding fields to the right of the name label. Then select the option button for the employee's status, employee, sales rep, or both. If you select employee, the individual appears on employee-related reports and the payroll entry window. If you select Sales Rep, they appear in the Sales Rep dropdown and on Accounts Receivable Sales Rep reports. Paychecks cannot be issued to these people. Both allows for both aspects at once. To make an employee record inactive after it has been entered, you can check the Inactive checkbox to the right. To view basic employee information, click the General tab. Enter the employee's address into the Address fields. Then enter the City, State, and Zip into the three fields to the right of the label with the same name. Enter the country of the employee into the Country field. Below the address, enter the employee's primary email address into the Email field and enter their secondary email address into the Email to field. At the top of the next column of fields, enter the employee's home phone, work phone, and mobile phone numbers into the three fields of the same name. Enter the employee's social security number into the social security number field. You can assign the employee an employee type within the type field by entering whatever code you want to use for that purpose into the field provided. The values you enter into this field can later be used as a report filter or as a way of selecting a group of employees for whom you wish to process payroll. To add an employee photo if desired, click the Add Photo hyperlink. Sage 50 then opens an open dialog box that lets you browse to and then select the picture of the employee. Then click the Open button within the dialog box after selecting the photo to add it to the employee's record. To enter employee beginning balances as of the start date of your company file, click the Employee Beginning Balances button to open the Employee Beginning Balances window. Entering these values lets you produce accurate information within your payroll and W-2 reports. After entering these values, click the Save button to save them, and then close the Employee Beginning Balances window. You will examine entering Employee Beginning Balances in more detail in the lesson titled Adding Employee Beginning Balances later within this chapter. In the Customizable Fields section at the bottom of this tab, you can enter information into the fields. These fields are the fields you created within the Employee Defaults window. To enter additional employee data, click the Additional Info tab. In the Emergency Contact section, enter the employee's emergency contact information. Type the emergency contact's name into the Name field. Then enter their relationship to the employee into the Relationship field. Then enter the emergency contact's primary phone number into the Phone 1 field and their secondary phone number into the Phone 2 field. In the Demographic Information section, you can enter additional demographic information about the employee. Enter the employee's birth date into the Birth Date field. You can select their marital status from the Marital Status dropdown. You can then select a gender from the Gender dropdown. You can then select an ethnicity from the Ethnic Origin dropdown. In the Employment Details section, enter the employee's position into the Job Title field. 
If you use job codes, you can enter the employee's job code into the job code field. If your company has different divisions, you can enter the division for which the employee works into the division field. If you have different physical locations in your company, you can enter the employee's location into the location field. You can enter the employee's department, if needed, into the department field. If the employee has a supervisor, you can select the name of this employee's supervisor from the supervisor dropdown. This dropdown contains the names of all employees and sales reps entered into the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window. You can click the email button next to the supervisor dropdown to send an email to the employee's supervisor if you entered an email address for the supervisor into the email field on the general tab when you created the selected supervisor's employee record in the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window. In the next column of fields, select the employee's employment status from the Employment Status dropdown. Note that these choices are the ones you created within the Employee Defaults window on the Employment Status tab. You can click the Customize Statuses hyperlink to the right of the drop-down menu to quickly open this window and show the tab to change the statuses if needed. Then select the employee's hire date from the Hired Calendar drop-down. If the employee is terminated in the future, you can select their termination date from the Terminated Calendar drop-down. If you rehire a terminated employee, you can select their rehire date from the Rehired Calendar drop-down. You can enter the employee's I-9 verification status into the I-9 verification status field. After the employee is verified, you can select their verification date from the I-9 verification date drop-down field. To enter information about how you pay the employee, click the Pay Info tab. Select an option from the Pay Method drop-down, Salary, Hourly Hours Per Pay Period, or Hourly Time Ticket Hours. If needed, you can enter an hourly rate for customer billing for time recorded on time tickets into the Rate Used to Bill Customer field. Then select the frequency with which you pay this employee from the Pay Frequency drop-down. After that, enter the usual number of hours the employee works in the selected pay period into the Hours per Pay Period field. Then set the different pay levels available for this employee. Enter all the pay types and related pay amounts this employee can earn under either the Hourly Pay Rate or Salary Pay Rate column for each pay type in the Pay Type list. For salaried employees, enter the amount of pay for each pay type for the pay period selected above. Click the Use Defaults checkbox to clear the check from the box if you do not want to use the standard General Ledger Payroll Expense Account for the selected employee's pay types. If you do that, you must then select a different General Ledger account from the adjacent Account field. After entering the pay types and pay rates, you can check either of the two checkboxes at the bottom of this tab for Eligible for Health Insurance and receives W-2 electronically if they apply to this employee. The Performance Reviews and Raise History buttons will be discussed in a separate lesson. To enter the employee's withholding information, click the Withholding Info tab. If the employee uses a W-4 prior to 2020, check the Employee Uses W-4 Prior to 2020 checkbox and click OK in the message that appears. If the employee has multiple jobs or a spouse or partner with employment, check the Multiple Jobs checkbox. Then select the employee's appropriate filing status from the drop-down in the Filing Status column for each payroll field shown under the Payroll Field Names column. Enter the employee's number of allowances into the Allowances column for the federal, state, and any local or special rows as needed. Ensure the local and or state payroll tax values appear correctly under the state slash locality column. Also, enter any withholding amounts under the Line 3 Dependent Annual Amount, Line 4A Other Income Annual Amount, Line 4B Deductions Annual Amount, and or additional withholding columns as needed.
Under the percentage column, enter the percentage of the employee's gross pay to withhold for any retirement plan shown under the payroll field names column. If the employee can make catch-up payments on the retirement plan shown in the payroll field names column, then you can select Yes from the Catch-up field. If the employee participates in an FSA plan, enter the amount to be withheld from each paycheck into the FSA amount field for the FSA plans shown in the payroll field names column. At the bottom of the tab, under the W-2 checkboxes section, you can also check the employee has retirement plans such as a simple IRA, 401k, 403b, etc. checkbox if the employee participates in a 401k or other retirement plan. Check the checkbox for statutory employee if the employee is a statutory employee according to the current IRS guidelines, which checks the associated check boxes in the employee's W-2 form. To enter the employee's vacation and sick time, click the vacation slash sick time tab. This tab lets you change the specifics of the employee's vacation and sick time tracking if they differ from the settings in the employee defaults window. To change the employee's values, first uncheck either or both checkboxes for the This employee uses the company default settings for vacation and This employee uses the company default settings for sick time in the vacation time settings section and the sick time settings section. Then enter the employee's specific vacation and sick time settings into the area below the checkboxes. To enter deductions specific to the employee if needed, click the Employee Fields tab. For non-calculated payroll deductions, you may have an employee whose payroll deduction amounts differ from the company-wide ones you created in the Employee Defaults window. To enter specific employee deductions on this tab, uncheck the Use Defaults field for the desired deduction to not use the standard payroll field information for this employee as defined by the values in the Employee Defaults window. Then change the account used to track the tax liability or the amount deducted from the employee's paycheck by changing the values within the account and amount columns as needed. To change the default employer paid payroll taxes if needed, click the Company Fields tab. It is most unlikely you will need to make changes on this tab as you would only need to do so if the settings need to be different from the values found in the Employee Defaults window. The values shown are established by the taxes and benefits you entered for the payroll settings when you initially created the payroll for the company file. To save your changes and leave the record displayed in the window after entering all the necessary employee information, click the Save button in the toolbar at the top of the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window. Alternatively, to save the employee record and then create a new blank employee record so you can continue entering employee data, click the Save and New button within the toolbar. To close this window when you are finished using it, Click the Close button within this Windows toolbar. Remember to click the Subscribe button to see more of our videos. See our full suite of courses, instruction manuals, and quick reference guides at www.teachucomp.com.